Kenner alluded to it. Amari Cooper traded to the Buffalo Bills for a third-round pick uh, and a seventh-round pick. Browns ship over a sixth-rounder that I don't think was even theirs. I think it was the Lions. If, I, if, right. if, I'm, if I'm wrong on that, I'm sorry. But that is the big blockbuster trade immediately following the Devontae Adams trade news from yesterday. So those are pretty much it. Those are your headlines. Uh, not, a, not a busy day yesterday. There is baseball today. The Mets and the Dodgers are back at it for game three. The series is tied one apiece. Ken, are you sad that you guys get worse by the day, you guys being the Browns? No, oh, I like by the way, addition. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, addition <laughs> by subtraction, dude. He, he leaves the league and drops. Get his ass out of here. We have a higher but, standard than guys who drop those passes. Man. Now he's going to like his quarterback. So you and now be, he's going to catch be everything. Careful. You better be careful. Um, look, I, I didn't. I was. I'm not surprised by this too. He was very unhappy. He was disgruntled coming in. I didn't think he was that disgruntled. I think this more has to do with how bad the offense is, how bad Deshaun Watson has been. I think he stopped supporting Deshaun Watson, which is what it sounds like a lot of guys are doing in that locker room. Bottom line is, it's at the end of the day for the Cleveland Browns to have a receiver that is one of the league leaders in drops to be able to yeah. trade him out for a third rounder. I think that's pretty damn good. Now I'm not spinning this. This. This is a result of things falling apart in Cleveland. I'm not spinning it. This is not a good thing, but considering the circumstances, to take Amari Cooper and turn him into a third rounder when years ago when he was in the midst of his prime, you only gave up a fifth round pick to get him. The, the Browns traded a fifth round pick to the Cowboys to acquire him a few years ago. And now while he's leading the league in drops and statistically bad this season, they were able to, to maximize the urgency of the Bills and get a third rounder in return for him. That That's... They salvage that situation, but it doesn't fix anything right now because obviously draft picks are key. I was expecting a fifth rounder, maybe less than that, honestly, with how bad it's been. Uh, but I'll take the return. It just doesn't fix anything in the immediate future. Makes it worse heading into this game. I was like, could they just wait one more week? Can we just wait one more week? But nope. yeah. it is what it is. One and five. One and five. Interesting that uh, after yesterday, both Amari Cooper and Devontae Adams traded for third round picks. And uh, over the summer, Howie Roseman, the Eagles GM, who's constantly praised for all of his moves, traded a third round pick for Jahan Dotson. Yes. Yeah. Who has been very bad this year. So That's tough. Friendly reminder that the last two big time, quote unquote, big time moves that Howie Roseman has made, the signing of Devin White, that was going to change that defense. He was going to overhaul that linebacker room. Uh, an absolute stud, right? Yeah. Oh, well, no, no. Howie Roseman just continues to sign and trade for guys whose name he recognizes from draft night, and they all continue to fail. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. But I'll tell you what. Good for Cleveland. It seems like they're they're tanking the season. They're gonna try to lose out here and try to get a better draft pick. Sure. I, I think that that's that should be the play. Just I, I, like people are gonna get mad at the the Deshaun continues to play, and they should because he's not a good quarterback. But I do think if that's the play, we'll just we'll just let him be as bad as possible, and we'll benefit from that in the draft. I think that's I think that's not a bad strategy for what it's worth. It's a tough division. There's really no light in sight. You get Nick Chubb back this week. But at the end of the day, I, I, do you believe in the Cleveland Browns offense? No. I, it, it's clear that the, the front office doesn't. It's clear that ownership doesn't. And they're just riding out this storm that they've created for themselves. I don't know if – and people keep asking, you know, the fire sale begins. I don't, I don't know if it is. I don't know if it is. Like, I think there, he was disgruntled. And I'm not saying that there's guys that are happy in that locker room. You're one in five. You shouldn't be. But I, I don't know if this was, and it seems like a lot of Browns reporters, they're not sure either. They're not sure if this is the start to a fire sale or if this was just a situation where you had to try to salvage this. Let, let me be clear. You should not have got a third rounder for Amari Cooper. I still wonder if there's some guys that they're dangling out there just to see what the value is, as, as you should at this point at 1-5. and five. I think the second the Bills were desperate enough, and I think that I think that's a lot to give up for Amari Cooper. I'm happy with the return from a, from a Browns perspective. But they took advantage of the desperation of the Buffalo Bills. I don't know if it's a start to a fire sale or not, more so than it was, oh, you're going to give up a third for Amari on a season like this when he's one of the league leaders in drops? I think it was more of that than the start to a fire sale. Now, by the time this re-airs in Dayton later today, there could be two more pieces moved on from by Cleveland. Yep. Who knows? I just, I'm not ready yet to say it's the start to a fire sale because I think this was more of an isolated, disgruntled situation versus, all right, we're just going to unload on everybody. We'll see what happens. But do, you think the, do you think the narrative in Cleveland is that they want a fire sale or that they want to keep fighting for this season? What do you think? What do you, I what think, do you think that... Go ahead. No, re-ask your question. Do you think that the narrative in Cleveland right now, but and that's just the fan base, what everybody's thinking about Deshaun Watson, do you think that that city 
wants them to move on from everybody. They just want to reset everything so they can get through this Deshaun Watson nonsense and then get their franchise back. Or do you think they I want to keep? Or do they, you think they want to keep fighting? I think they want to keep that. And I know from my perspective, I, I want them to do everything they can to keep that defense intact. A lot of people think Miles Garrett's going to be next up. I will say, if you're the Browns, I take the call from the Lions. I see what they're desperate enough—not desperate, but like how urgent are the Lions about getting a big time pass rusher in there? Are they willing to unhaul some stuff to get it? I look at the Houston Texans who have a quarterback on a rookie deal and they're a Super Bowl contender. Imagine what a Miles Garrett can do in Houston. Houston can spend the money on Miles Garrett. They have the draft capital to do it thanks to Cleveland, right? Like, they, is Cleveland willing to, to do another deal with the Houston Texans to send Miles Garrett over there? If they can get a haul, I think that they entertain it. But I do think the, the feeling in Cleveland is amongst Browns fans, try to do everything you can to keep that defense intact couple moves in the offseason can fix the offense. However, I have no clue what the hell the plan is for Deshaun. This idea that we can't sit him is ridiculous. Oh, because of the fully guaranteed money. That that actually makes it pretty simple. You're going to pay him no matter what. So you might right. as well just bench his ass, deal with his unhappy personality, and at least give yourself a chance. This idea that you have to play him because you paid him so much, that's ridiculous. If you have to pay him no matter what, you may as well just say, fine, we're going to pay you to get out of our way. All right, we're, yeah. we're going to pay. You're not starting. We're just paying you to stay out of our way so that Jameis Winston, hell, I wish they would have just stuck with Joe Flacco. I said that when they didn't bring Flacco back. I thought that was a mistake um, for this very reason. But I hate that excuse of they have to play him because of the fully guaranteed money. I think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard from that perspective. The sunk cost fallacy is the human nature to follow through with something that we've already invested heavily in, even when giving up is clearly the better idea. Seems like what's going on in Cleveland. Yeah, I... I, I don't know. I, I think if, if you're a Cleveland Browns fan, at this point, it's just a ride out the storm. And, and, and it's going to be bad for a couple years here, and you just got to deal with it. Because they're not going to bench him, and I, I, know you're, I know what you're saying, and I agree with it. But I, I also know how, how billionaires operate. And, right. and that billionaire in Cleveland is not going to let Deshaun Watson just take a free ride and take his $45 million a year, or whatever that may be, whatever that number is, uh, for the next couple of seasons and just sit there and have a vacation in Cleveland. I don't think that's going to I don't think that's going to fly. Whether or not it's the right decision or not, we all know it's the right decision at this point. Something's very very wrong. There is a there is now a, a giant culture problem in Cleveland when they didn't have that a year ago when Joe Flacco took over that offense and led them to the playoffs. I think you, I I really do think that that Amari Cooper is going to about to have a career year in Buffalo in the remaining what 10 11 games of this season. I think he's going to go off and I think you're going to see what a player that is in a good situation with a good quarterback that has a chance to make the playoffs. You're going to see those drops disappear. I know you don't like that, and, 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 I, and I get it. I understand it. There's no logical backing to my point on this. But it is not good in Cleveland right now. And it's evident by, by nobody really wanting to be there. No, as of right now, it's, it's, it's physical. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really a mental thing. It's a physical thing that's happening on the field where – Everyone's showing that they don't want to play right now. It's 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 brutal, and and Cleveland just has to get through it, I guess. I don't know. Good luck, Deshaun. And again, as as I've said three times this week, Bengals must win this game. Must win the game. There is no excuse now to lose. Deshaun can't throw to anybody. Has Jer how many catches has Jerry Judy had this year? Has he had ten catches this season? I mean, I don't know what the total is at this point, but it's probably not. Not, but not a lot 20. of people have eaten under the. Not a lot of people. Yeah, see, double that, double that production. Uh, but <laughs> there not go. a lot of people have eaten during this Deshaun run. Uh, you know, real, and real quick on that too, I've defended the Haslam's. I, I've still to this day, I know the result has been bad. I have no problem with the intent to go get Deshaun at the time that they did. No problem with it. None, none whatsoever. However, the dumbest decision ever is continuing to roll him out there just because we paid him and he's going to play. That, to me, because now you're putting him ahead of every single person in that locker room, and I don't blame one damn player if they want to get the hell out. You know, you got to put the Nick Chubbs, who are literally putting their bodies on the line for that city and for that franchise. Miles yep. Garrett, who has been everything to that franchise. You know, you got the likes of a David Njoku and a Denzel Ward and some really good people slash really, really good players, and you're telling those guys to hell with you? Uh, that, that that's the problem I have. I have no problem with Cleveland at the time going to get Deshaun because it's not, I mean, you, there's a lot of people that hope this would happen. Not a lot of people that knew, there's nobody that knew that this would happen. A lot of people that hoped that this would happen. Well, it's happened, and now I'm going to judge you on how you 
you know, change the course. And sticking with him makes no sense. Because, Elliot, like you said, they've paid him. They're going to throw him out there. Well, they have him for two more years. Yeah, no. uh, are they just going to start him for two more years? Like I could see if it was just this year and saying, "Hey, you know what? We're going to ride it out. We're not going to put Jameis or anyone behind that offensive line. We're just going to let Deshaun go out there and play out the contract." It's two more years of this, two and a half more years of this. At this point, just cut costs, <laughs> not cut costs, but just cut him. Get get the hell out of the way. I'd rather lose with Jameis or attempt to win with Jameis than anything moving forward. We'll see what happens, but uh, it's not a good situation. It's not a good situation.